Hey guys, Dan, Warpaint JKU. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to video number five of the Project Maple Leaf build series. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to completely disassemble a 14 volt axle and I'm also going to show you guys a couple of tips and tricks that will make it easier to do the re-gear when it comes time for that. So check it out. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do on this axle is crack the diff cover and drain the fluid. The reason you're going to want to do that is because these diffs hold four quarts. Four quarts! That's as much as your front and rear axle combined on a JK Jeep. The reason for that is because it's obviously larger, but just like the Dana 44 rear axle, the tubes actually get oil down them and that is what is responsible for lubricating the bearings on your hubs. Same with the 14 volt as the Dana 44. So you're going to want to give it plenty of time to let that fluid get out of there. After you're done with that, all these brake lines got to go. There's a few bolts. There's one here. The diff cover has a couple that hold. There's one on the other shock mount and then basically they're going to come right off. After you have those bolts out, these hard lines here just get snipped. They're probably going to have a little bit of brake fluid in them, but no big deal. It won't be much, if at all. Um, once that's removed, you have a spring here that holds your emergency brake cable onto the little arm that basically opens the chute. The way you're going to remove that is basically by pulling back on the spring and then unhooking it from that arm. You can do that with a pair of pliers or you can just do that with your hands. I'm going to try to do it with my hands first. Yeah, see, wasn't wasn't that hard to do. You're going to have to do that again to the other side and then we can basically take all these cables and throw them in the junk pile. All right, next on the list, if your vehicle has brake calipers and rotors, we're gonna wanna remove those. Um, there should be a small 13 millimeter bolt holding your brake line to a bracket on the back side of the axle. You're gonna have that on both sides. And then on the front side, you can remove an, in this case, 18 millimeter. Your year might be slightly different, especially if your brackets have already been changed. Um, but you're gonna remove an 18 millimeter at the top and bottom pull that brake caliper right off, and then your brake rotor should come off right after it. Okay guys, so at this point, this axle's pretty well broken down. It's a lot simpler than any front axle, but certainly the Super Duty. Um, at this point, we're gonna be moving on in here to remove the axle shafts. Now, the way these remove is with these bolts all the way around, they should be three quarter. Hit them with your impact gun and then maybe break the seal. Sometimes there's a gasket in there. Sometimes people use RTV. That's what I like to use. Um, so you might have to pry on them a little bit with, with something. But again, remember how I had said that the axle fluid will actually be all the way down those axle tubes and into those bearings. So be ready to maybe have a little bit of fluid drip out and obviously those axle shafts should be coated in a light film of it. So let's get to it. Okay, so that was a perfect opportunity to pull those axle shafts, give them an inspection. You saw in video two that they're big. That's the reason we chose to, to use this axle. But, you know, anything can happen and you don't know the history of your axle. So it's worth just giving them a quick inspection, making sure the splines aren't twisted. Now, with that said, the hub bearing on this side is greasy and kind of nasty. That hub bearing um, is like that because the seal in that hub bearing is starting to fail, right? Um, so if you ever, once this vehicle's back together and you replace all those seals, you wind up having a diff fluid leak on the inside of your rear wheel. 
and where the axle shaft sits on the end as you just saw is dry that's gonna be that seal which is pretty easy to gain access to but let's get back so to it for this next section you're gonna need a couple of special tools um, you're gonna need something like a pick right here um, you're gonna need a magnet and then you're gonna either need a straight blade screwdriver to get that specialized nut off of that uh, end of this axle tube here, or you're gonna need uh, literally one made for a 14 bolt axle. Um, this is a socket and you can tell by the teeth that are on the end of it that it's made specifically for this nut. I'll show you why in just a second. But basically, the first step, okay, is gonna be to remove this spring clip that's in here um, basically you just kind of lift up on it with the pick and kind of pull it out and you'll wind up being able to remove it now that spring is a lock and its sole purpose is to hold that magnet in there so that this nut on the end of the uh, of the spindle here can't loosen because it's not that tight um, and now we're gonna use our magnet and we're gonna try to Plan B, stronger magnet. All right, so there we go. That's that little magnetic block. Don't lose that because you're gonna reuse that spring and this little magnet that secures it in there. Now, you can see this nut in here has all these little notches cut out in it and that's where all these teeth are gonna sit. So it fits perfectly in there. Um, and then you can just spin it out by hand because like I said, it is not tight, so. We're gonna spin that off. Okay, and this is exactly why that nut, I mean, we did that by hand off of a one ton axle on a 14 bolt. Uh, that's why you need that special socket to get this off. Um, you can maybe, like I said, get a straight blade flathead screwdriver, put it in these notches and kind of knock it loose. It would take a while, but you're certainly not gonna be able to torque this to spec and compress those bearings when you put it back together uh, at the end of this process. So you're definitely gonna have to get a socket like that. I'll link to one. At this point, it's time to remove this hub assembly off the spindle. Um, you're gonna get in there with a pry bar. If it doesn't just pull right off, which it usually doesn't, get in there with a pry bar, you can knock it loose and just slide it off. We're gonna remove these four nuts on the back of the flange here and then take off the emergency brake assembly. basically all we have to do is remove the center section and the pinion. It's pretty easy to do on a 14 bolt and there are no shims or anything that we're going to be messing with on this. So taking this apart now when you're not necessarily ready to re-gear won't set you back when it is time to re-gear. But there is one thing that you're definitely going to want to make sure that you do in order to keep that re-gear nice and smooth and nice and simple. So let's dive into this 14 volt carrier and I will explain it. This obviously for people that don't know, this is the ring gear. This is your carrier that your ring gear is bolted to. That's what these bolts do. They hold that on. Um, but on the side, you have a bearing cap, okay? This basically is what holds your carrier into the axle. And then you use these, um, to basically, you can loosen it and then you adjust the tension on it by turning these barrel adjusters in the ends here. The problem or the, the thing you really gotta make sure you do with these bearing caps is make sure that the right one stays on the right side, the left one stays on the left side, and that you mark it so that the top stays on top and the bottom stays on bottom. The way I like to do that is I just use a metal punch. And what I'll do with this is I punch, I use the letter A, and I'll punch a letter A on the top um, or the bottom of the bearing cap, and, and then I'll punch it on the diff cover mating surface over here, and then when we use RTV and stuff to seal it, it'll fill that in anyway. But it helps us keep track of which goes on which side. You just match up the two symbols, and you are already set, and you know where to put it. Then what I'll do is I'll take this same symbol and I'll just 
turn it sideways and put it on the other side. So let's get to punching that. And there we go. We have our letter A and our letter A and they match each other. So now we know that this side gets lined up with that in that direction, right? If I turn it the other way, it would be upside down. On this side over here, we're gonna turn it sideways. Okay, and then we'll turn it sideways, pointing in the same direction. Okay, once that's stamped and marked, you're gonna to wanna to remove the barrel adjuster and then put them off to the side. Now these can be interchangeable. This side can go to that side, no big deal. Really the bearing caps right now are the only things that you have to be conscious of. And now that we stamped them, it's no big deal. But let's remove these. Next, we're gonna remove the bearing cap bolts. Now these are held in with Loctite, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to use maybe an impact or a breaker bar. Sometimes these bearing caps, just because they've been in there for so long, they can, uh, they can be a little tight. Just tap them with a hammer if you need to. Otherwise, you just lift them out, stick them off to the side. Okay, it's now time to loosen these barrel adjusters. The trick with these barrel adjusters is they both loosen and tighten opposite of each other. So the one on the driver side, in order to loosen it, you're gonna to wanna to turn it up toward the top of the vehicle. We have this axle right now um, kind of flipped around from the camera, so this technically is the top of the vehicle, um, the top of the axle. So we're gonna turn it up to loosen it. You're just gonna give it you know, a number of turns, make sure you can get it, get it kind of loose. Um, there shouldn't be a ton of preload on it, but this is what we're going to do on the 14 bolt. And this is also why the 14 bolt is super easy to re-gear because you don't have to count shims and stuff. It's a lot easier. And then on this side, we're going to turn it the opposite direction. We're going to turn it toward the bottom of the vehicle to loosen it. Give it a few turns. And now this carrier should be able to come right out. So not too hard to take it apart. We're going to go after the pinion next. But if you remember from video two, when we talked about the 14 bolt and why it was super strong and how there was something different about the pinion, we had talked about how the pinion on a normal axle has a smooth top on it and how on the 14 bolt there's a bearing on this side as well as on the other side so if you look down right in here you can see this is part of that pinion and there's another bearing in here which is unlike a lot of other axles and that supports the pinion on both sides right so as that pinion turns not only is there a bearing up here, but there's a bearing on the backside in its own carrier, and that allows it to not have any pinion deflection. Now the pinion is held in its own carrier, so just by removing these bolts, it should just slide right out. Sometimes you need to give it a little hit with a hammer to kind of break this. All right, guys, before I leave you, I just want to show you a comparison between the size of a 410 ratio, factory ratio, 14 bolt gear on the pinion and a pinion from a Dana 30 in a factory ratio. Now we all know that when you re-gear these, the pinion and the contact area between the pinion and the ring gear gets smaller. Check this out. Can you see the size difference between a Dana 30 and the 14 bolt? Right? I mean, like, it is absolutely enormous, okay? Um, that 14 bolt pinion is huge. It's supported on both sides of the pinion gear so you don't get any deflection. The ring gear is a 10 and a half. I mean, all the things we talked about in video two are why we're using this axle. It's also super fun and easy to re-gear. So we're going to talk about that in a future video. But guys, stay tuned. Thanks for the support. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your buddies.